In late 2019, huge fires ripped through enormous parts of Australia. There was virtually nowhere in the country that didn't have a fire burning somewhere nearby. And even now, in early 2020, there are still blazes burning out of control. We've had a terrible, terrible loss of lives, enormous numbers of properties destroyed, and near countless millions of hectares of bushland have been incinerated. We got lucky. The fire came to within a kilometre or so of our back fence, but it makes it pretty personal when you spend four or so days on evacuation standby, when during the day the sky is just a wall of smoke and at night it glows a hellish orange red. But that was a month and a half ago. Since then we've had some really nice rain. So I jumped on my trusty mountain bike and I headed down some of the trails through the bush to come and see exactly how it's all recovering. One of the most striking things is how a burnt area can so quickly be carpeted with new growth. Grasses, herbs, ground covers, a whole range of plants springing back to life amazingly fast. Banksias, like this swamp banksia, have a couple of neat survival tricks. Like many banksias, they can hold their seed cones for years. They may release some seeds due to heat or drought, but fire really triggers them to open, scattering seeds to the ground. At soil level, they also have a well-insulated woody lump called a lignotuber. This is packed with dormant buds, and after a fire, these burst into life. Garnia normally looks like a big grassy tuft. Most often you'll see them with long seed heads sticking out the top, but once burnt, they look more like some bizarre black tentacles. The stems themselves are heavily insulated by papery bark-like sheaths, and beneath that lie buds that will burst into life once the main leaves have been burnt away. Grass trees, the xanthoreas, are a classic for the Aussie bush and one tough fire survivor. They can live for hundreds of years and their trunks show all the blackening from the fires they've survived through. Fire will burn away all the leaves, both old and new, but the super insulated trunk will protect the all important growing core. The gum trees, eucalyptus, angophora and coriambia species have a heap of tricks in their survival toolkit. Their bark protects them from heat. Smooth shiny bark will reflect heat and then peel away after the fire. Others have corky bark that works as insulation. Underneath the bark they have epicormic buds. These are special dormant leaf and branch buds that after fire will erupt from the blackened trunk to ensure the tree still has a ready supply of energy until its canopy regrows. Many of the ukes hold onto their seed capsules, gum nuts, high up in the canopy. As the fire runs through they drop them to the forest floor, spreading thousands and thousands of seeds in the hope that some will germinate. And they do. I find the most awesome thing is when you see these tiny seedlings rising from the ashes in the shadow of their parent. And then there's the unexpected. The delicate little wildflowers have burst back into colourful life. So here's the thing, there's no doubt that our native plants have evolved incredible capacities to regenerate. This has happened over tens of thousands of years in response to normal bushfires. And normal is the key word there because we're starting to see fires that aren't normal. They're too hot, they're too intense, they're too long lasting. Before the fires, we're often getting longer, deeper droughts that are having a great impact on the bush because the energy and the moisture that they normally have in reserve to survive after a fire, they're expending just to survive a drought. Then we've got these higher background temperatures that seem to constantly be creeping upwards. That's what's helping to fuel these intense fires. So the fires are of greater intensity. The conditions for the plants to survive in are harder, harsher, drier, hotter. A lot of plants are simply not going to survive. Those mechanisms they've developed for regeneration they may not survive the heat of some of these new fires that are 50, maybe even 100 degrees hotter. I do not know the technical figures on these things. But the simple fact is, a lot of these survival mechanisms may not work through these newer intense fires. And then we're often not seeing follow-up rain that they use to top the tank up after they've put out that new survival growth. Where it's going to lead us to, I don't know. 
I think we're going to see dramatic changes in vegetation communities. I think we're going to lose various species because they simply will not have the ability to survive through these fires. That's going to lead to a change in species diversity in, in birds and animals as well because there won't be the habitat that there used to be. I think for many of us, this is going to be the first real example of our changing climate. The bush simply won't look the way it used to. It won't have the wildlife that it used to. It won't have the wildflowers and the plants that it used to. And the simple fact is, the bottom line, as tough as all of this may be, as well evolved as it all may be, it's still only so tough and it can only take so much.